like cold water to a weary soul. So is good news from a distant land. Good news and it's bad news. Right, now Which what? news you want first? Well, if you give me the good news without the bad news, that don't grab you, that don't work. All right, well, let me get the bad news. Ooh. Everyone must die. There's more bad news. God is going to judge our lives. But the good news, God sent Jesus Christ so we can serve our death sentence and then bring new life. It's the Good News, the talk, good show news talk Show with your host, Tamashian the Visionaire. The Visionaire. What up, doe? The ghetto fade to black. Welcome to the Good News Talk Show. I am your host, Tamashian the Visionaire, and today I had um, a show that was on my heart for quite some time, and I actually was inspired by a song uh, by this gentleman by the name of Fizzle. Uh, the song was called Pictures on the Shirt. He was just talking about just driving through the city and having a broken heart, seeing teddy bears uh, wrapped around poles because a, sen- a senseless murder had taken place, whether it's somebody got hit by a car, somebody got shot, you know, but just driving through Detroit, you see a lot of that, so. I lay in my bed at night. Sometimes I can't even sleep. Because I hear the hood crying so loud. I just wanted to do a show uh, just dedicated to the whole thing about you know what we can do as Christians to, to, to decrease the murder rate and help out kids with these decision making that the decisions uh, that they're making. So um, I ain't even got this one right here. Can you believe that? I'm hurt. I even got this one. He right here. My, my normal slogan is in the building, but we outside the building right now. So I'm, I'm still in the building, but outside the building. In the D, holding it down. Yes, yes. Uh, um, one of the things that I do know about you, bro, is you got an awesome testimony about what the Lord has brought you from. You talk about it on your show a lot, on your album a lot. And, um, you know, one of the ways that we can do uh, evangelism and apologetics is truly having a transformed life. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. the biggest apologi- uh, apologetic uh, point you can make. Yeah. And just talk about, you know, your transformation, what it was like for you transforming into the person that you were and to you, who, who you are now. Yeah, um, basically, I grew up in the streets. St. Louis, Missouri, grew up in the hood. Um, I'm actually a product of evangelism and urban missions. I was in my hood one day chilling, minding my own business, and here come this church popping up, talking to me about Jesus. And I met a dude at that point who was one of my good friends, now his name Flame. One thing led to another, the Lord pulled me out. But now I grew up in my in, I grew up in my city all my life, hustling, trapping, uh, getting arrested for petty stuff. And, What's trapping? Trapping, you said selling you dope. Song. Yeah, trapping mean like selling dope. So y'all that's a south together. word. Like, yeah. What, they, they set some people up and trapped them or something. Oh. <laughs> now that's a southern word oh, okay. to mean hustling, selling dope. So I grew up in St. Louis. That's what I did. And growing up in that environment, you see a lot of people, uh, especially with the gang activity, you see a lot of people you love get killed. So I remember age 13. Um, age 13, one of my my closest friends that I knew that I was real close with, he was older than me. Uh, got killed, you know what I'm saying, over some nonsense. And at that point, it was just nonstop, you know what I'm saying. Every, I think every year for up until I was uh, probably 18 or 19, every year at least three, at least three of my friends got murdered. I'm talking about immediate friends, not people that I knew from other hoods, stuff like that. So when I do songs like "Pitch on the Shirt," I'm doing it from a personal, you know what I'm saying, conviction. Uh, seeing my little partners, uh, my cousins. Like I got three cousins that got murdered. Like me, it was like me and five. It was five of us, me and four of my other cousins that hung out in the hood together. But right now, like three of them dead. You know what I'm saying? So um, that my it's a personal conviction for me, man. But that's where stuff like that comes from. So, so since somebody came to the hood to reach you, because you very well could have been one of the brothers that got murdered. Yeah, yeah. You know, living the lifestyle that you live. How important is it for us? To now that we've been enlightened and pulled out of darkness into his marvelous light, how, how important for us to reach back and do the same thing that, that happened to you? How important for us to be these urban missionaries? Oh, yeah. It's very important. Um, one of my favorite passages right now on urban missions is Jeremiah 29. Uh, Jeremiah 29, I think verse 7, starting at verse 7. But when you go to Jeremiah 29 and you look, you'll see Jeremiah 29 uh, where God talking to the children of Israel through the prophet Jeremiah telling them, look, I'm not about to pull you out of exile. They were amongst a group of people that they didn't want to be amongst. They were trapped. 
and, and it's the same thing with us. We grow up in urban communities and in, the, and in the hood. We get saved, first thing we want to do, or we get a job, first thing we want to do, we want to get out of there. It's like, yo, I'm gone. I'm, and, and once we withdraw it from it, we don't really see what's going on no more. So it's out of sight, out of mind. But we see in Jeremiah, uh, God telling them through the prophet, he said, look, he said, go and build houses, take wives, have children, let your children have children, right, right. And, and rebuild the community. Right. And he said, not only that, pray for the welfare of, this, of the city, because in its welfare, you'll find your welfare. So God said, not only am I going to bless you for being, and I ain't talking about monetary blessing just in general, but God said, not, not only are you're going to get eternally rewarded for it, but you're going to find your welfare, your peace, your strength. You're going to find all of that in, in, in praying for that city and rebuilding them. So it's very important for the church not only to evangelize, but somebody has to move there, bro. Somebody mm. got to stay there. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they need yeah. to see. Because when you look at the hood, it's so much. It's one thing for me to go evangelize and say, yeah, Jesus loves you. Here go a track. Here go a Bible. Come out the church. That's one thing. They might come. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's a whole nother thing when you take a family, move them into a community, and dudes that never had fathers, uh, never seen a healthy marriage, never seen a person playing with their kids, throwing a ball, dudes that have never seen that will be able to see that modeled out firsthand. And that'll, and Lord willing, encourage them. A, a dude seeing somebody playing with their son, like, man. Make, make me want to go play with my son. You know what I mean? Like, man, let me call my son. I remember dudes talking about Tupac. As, as simple as what he did was. I remember dudes talking about Tupac when they heard Dear Mama. Like, man, I need to call my mama. You know what I'm saying? Just because they heard how this dude talked about his mama. It's like, yo, I need to call my mama, man, and tell her I love her. So imagine the effect with the power of God behind that. Dudes seeing men mm. living in their community and women, girls seeing women living in their community acting that thing out, man. It'll be beastly, man. Oh, that's live, man. So not only should we just reach the hood, but we should do life on life. You know, being in the community, living there, that's that, that's live. That's that's, that's yeah, definitely man. live. Now, uh, about these, the, the, the picture on the shirt and the uh, the teddy bears, you know, I, I, I'm just thinking about some young people who are living in the hood and they got to choose between... You know, handling one situation violently or handling another situation or having that same situation um, properly. You know what I'm saying? Where nobody gets hurt. I wanted to just talk, talk to you about um, young people ha making decisions that that the best outcome is nobody gets killed. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? And that's a hard one because when you live in the hood, you live by hood rules. Mm. So for an unredeemed person that don't know the Lord, I'm unredeemed, I don't know Jesus, somebody killed my cousin. I'm not gonna be sitting at home like, Lord, forgive him, you know what right, I'm saying? Right, right. But I think the first stuff that I talked about will tie into that. Cause I, I remember a dude moving to our neighborhood where I grew up at, and he's been there now for like 15 years, him and his family, wife, kids, everybody, like for 15 years. But I remember the relationship being built with him. And when he knew somebody got killed, he would come out and talk to people. So he had relationship with all of the people that probably would go retaliate. Right. He could talk to them and say, man, like, it ain't worth it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The Lord didn't make you for that. And so I think the first part will help that stuff out. We just can't tell dudes from a distance, y'all, man. Because okay. do it's it, just man. like, do do? these are the rules I live by. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's what they live by. That, the, the hood has its own set of rules. It, it's not the law that we live by. If you kill my people, I'm going to want to kill you. But on a flip note, from a distance, what I would tell dudes is, one, Jesus didn't make you for that. God made you. You look at the Bible, go to Genesis, the first book in the Bible, and you see where it said, in the beginning when God created man, it said God created man in his own image. Meaning God created man to have certain characteristics like him, to, to do certain things that will model and reflect him. So God didn't make you to be a goon, he didn't make you to be a hustler, a killer, trapper, a thug, whatever you want, whatever name you want to put on it. God made you to have a relationship with him, and the only way you can have a relationship is through Jesus Christ. So what I would say to dudes from a distance that are in those situations, and I've been there 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 times, that are in those situations, you're in the hood, you're involved in that kind of stuff, I want you to think about one thing. Like one, we in the hood we got what I call hood theology. God cool with everything we do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? All I got to do is pray 
and I'm straight. But I want to challenge you on that thought. Think about this. One, if I die today, am I going to heaven? Two, is the reason I'm not going to heaven because God is not pleased with my life or just because, hey, I didn't make it to heaven? But think about those two things. Because God, if God is not pleased with the way we live and we haven't accepted Jesus, one, then we have an issue. So you can't run around killing people, getting away with it. The judge might not catch you. The court might not catch you. Police may not catch you. But God see everything going on. And one day God going to hold you accountable for your actions. Like, there's a much better life to be lived, man, out here. And I know that now. Because now I'm standing in Detroit drinking tea. You know what I'm saying? Giving interviews when a few years back I was sitting in a jail cell with six felonies charges about to go to court thinking I'm finna get railroaded sit to jail the rest of my life so now I see the peace that Christ bring I see the like I see the peace that I have when I go places I don't gotta worry about man I wonder so and so and I'm gonna be there you know what I'm saying I don't gotta carry a burner around all of that like it's a whole nother life to be lived man that's what Jesus said Jesus said I came so you can have life and life more abundant trust me like the Bible say taste and see that the Lord is good go try the Lord Give the Lord a shot. I guarantee you it's much better than your life you live in. Mm. Uh, I don't need to ask any more questions. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Dude said it all. Dude said it all. I appreciate having you. Amen, bro. This, this is, is the, the good news. St. Louis, Thizzle, get on Fade to Black. This your boy Thizzle, a.k.a. the ex-hustler. Man, get at me online. Get with the Lord Jesus in your life. And now we go. God then make us man, so we can die in the hood, just to be a pitch on a shirt man, God then make us just so we can end up dead, and a bunch of teddy bears mark off where we lay man, Jesus overcame man, not just so we can overcome sin, but so we can overcome the hood too, man God love you man, you don't have to look to the hood for love, cause Jesus loves you. God love you so much, he sent his son to die for you.